Welcome to another edition of the B Radio Show. I'm your host, Brian Anthony. And boy, has it been a week. Basketball Wives, VH1, a whole lot more, plus I have a Paris Jackson update. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so let's just get right into things and start with this whole Paris Jackson update. So, I told you last week that Paris Jackson allegedly tried to commit suicide. She used a meat cleaver to cut her arms, she took a whole bunch of Motrins, and then she called a suicide hotline. The MT said they arrived on the scene, Paris was conscious, and she didn't put up a fuss or fight. She just hopped up on the stretcher like, let's hit it. So, I guess now there may, a custody battle may take place between the Jackson clan and Paris' biological mother, Debbie Rowe. Now, Paris is 15, remember, and she wants to go live with her mother, but Catherine, who is the has guardianship over Paris and her siblings, I guess doesn't want to let go. Now, Catherine is 80 plus years old. She's in no condition to be trying to raise no teenager. My mother is in her 50s, and my youngest sibling is 22. My mother's tired, so I know Catherine has to be tired. And they don't want to let the little girl go live with her mother. Well, they need to, because clearly they're not doing their job, because they were doing a job, this incident would have never occurred. So the girl needs her mother at this particular time in her life. She needs her mother, so let her go. Okay, so this next story, here's my disclaimer. I'm a fan of Usher. I'm a disgruntled fan, but I'm a fan. And this week, I guess he performed on a voice, you know, he's a judge, and I was getting texts and tweets saying I should perform him, but I wasn't going to interfere with my love and hip-hop Atlanta, so I caught it on YouTube. So I caught the performance. He performed an old song called Twister off his most current album, Looking For Myself. I remember it. Looking For Myself. And the song Twister. Now, that album's almost like two years old, shy. Why he performed that old song? No new material, Usher? Like, you don't have anything new for us? Hmm. Well, anyway, the performance was weak. He looked frazzled and he was sweating like a horn church. Gotta do better. Okay, so moving right along. You know, I make it no secret when I particularly doesn't don't care for an artist or movie star or anybody. It's no secret. And this next one, I don't care for him either. But it's news and that's my job. So rapper Two Chains has been having a rough week. Now, first, he got robbed in broad daylight at gunpoint, and then shots was fired at him as entourage. All this happened in um, San Francisco. San Francisco? I know they get bucked like that out there. Anyway, then later on, this fool goes and gets arrested for possession of marijuana and scissor. Now, let's remember he's 35 years old. But this fool was on an aircraft. Then the TSA agent realized that he had um, marijuana in his checked luggage. So he got arrested. Like, doesn't he know when you get to town, you go around and ask, where do we mean at? I just thought that's what everybody did. I mean, I don't even smoke weed. That's not what I do. But I know when I get, anytime I get in town, the first thing I look is for the liquor store. I need my Hennessy. <sighs> Moving right along. Chris Brown is back in court. So, Chris Brown had a parent court this week for a probation review hearing. Now, the LA County's DA's office, they're not satisfied on how he could be his community service. His community service. And remember, he, was, he, was on, he had to do community service from his incident that happened back with him and Rayon. Now, Chris did complete all the community service, but get this, they don't like how he did it. They said the paperwork, they don't like the paperwork, and they're not happy with the possible oversight of how the community, the community service was served and carried out. They're nerve. Like, the boy do the crime, do the time. He did his time for it. Like, why is there a problem? So now they're thinking about taking him back to court for a probation violation. Reason being, um, it all stemmed from the incident he had with a singer Frank Ocean that happened back in January. The two got in a little scuff on the parking lot. Frank said he don't care to press charges. It's not that serious. He wants to move on with his life. The LA County decides they want to get involved and they want to press charges. And you know, I know law enforcement's job is to serve, to serve and protect. I get that. But sometimes I think they can just make matters worse and messy. So if Frank doesn't care and wants to move on, and both parties want to move on, why would L.A. County get involved and make this a bigger issue? Because what's going to happen is if he has to go back and he gets in trouble, Chris is going to get, be getting hauled back and forth to court. Then he's going to have an attitude with Frank Ocean, and that's going to cause another problem that neither one of them want. So just let the whole thing go so these people can move on. Meanwhile, Chris got to appear, appear back in court July 15th, so we'll let you know what's going on. I really would like to see them to you know, work together musically. I think that would be really good. Anyway, 
It's time for this week's Artist in the Spotlight. Check it out. This week's Artist in the Spotlight, Kanye West. The rapper, the producer, the fashion icon. He went from being a producer to one of the most influential and successful rappers of his time. He's in third place in overall digital sales of the past decade, making him one of the best selling digital artists of all time. Along with that, West has won 21 Grammy Awards, making him one of the most awarded artists of all time. As he enters this new era of his life, the soon to be five is releasing his sixth studio album titled Jesus. Always reinventing his style and sound, this game changer will not only inspire the music industry, but continue to keep inspiring our views of the music industry. Kanye West, this week's Artist in the Spotlight. Okay, and speaking of Kanye West, I would love to congratulate him and girlfriend Kim Kardashian for welcoming their new baby girl. Now, Kim's baby didn't arrive five weeks early, but sources to Kanye and everyone says that Kim and the baby is both doing well, so congratulations to them. So, also, we want to congratulate Serena Williams because she just won the um, 2013 French Open. And last week, we congratulated Wendy Williams because she just been renewed her talk show to 2017. But this week, I want to congratulate another idol and mentor of mine, and that is Steve Harvey. Now, Steve Harvey is in his first season of his talk show that just debuted back in September. But NBC decided to renew him until 2016. So, congrats to Steve. Steve's the dude. I like Steve a lot. So, VH1. So, VH1 is doing his biopic on the um, female group TLC. So, I guess the film's supposed to debut sometime this fall. Meanwhile, they got Juice Adora to play T-Boss. They got Little Mama to play Left Eye. And they got Kiki Palmer to play Chili. But Left Eye's family is speaking out now. Her sister in particular, Raindrop Lopez. And yes, you heard us, this Raindrop Lopez. She said that VH1 never contacted or consulted her or anyone in her family about the film. And get this, this is how she found out. She said she found out because a friend of hers was cast as an extra in the film. That ain't right. Ain't right at all. Meanwhile... VH1 is bringing back another popular show of theirs, and that is Basketball Wives, Miami. So, this is going to be the fifth season that debuts in August. Tammy, Evelyn, and Shoni did an interview with Upscale Magazine. So, in the interview, they revealed that Royce won't be returning, and he did with Jennifer. Now, Evelyn went on and said that Royce is a non-factor. Shoni said Jennifer won't be returning because there just was no chemistry. For real, Shoni? That's the best excuse you can come up with. No chemistry. You got to do better. Anyway, so Shawnee also expressed how the show caused so much backlash in the past because of the bad and poor behavior in the show that's displayed every week. And how this season, she don't want to use any sponsorships or advertisements, so they decided to take a positive turn this season. Well, tell me, how are you going to make a positive turn when you still have Tammy and Evelyn on the show? Because them two display... The bad behavior that we all see. Like, Timmy's been ghetto since the real world back in the day. Y'all remember she did the real world? Like, you remember? I'm a slave, I'm a slave, I'm a slave to your loving. I get a little fever from your kissing and your hugging. <laughs> y'all remember that? <laughs> anyway, and then you have Evelyn herself, who is like the mean girl leader. So how are you supposed to make a turn? But this is what Evelyn had to say about the whole situation. People were connecting my behavior on the show with the incident with Chad. They were like, well, if she acts like that on the show, then I'm sure she acts like that at home. I'm a totally different person at home. Are you really, Evelyn? Because you sound like a fool. Like, you sound stupid. So you mean to tell us you act foolish and when the cameras roll? So I guess you really ain't about that life. I mean, and you know what? I like Evelyn. I really do like Evelyn. I like Chad. I like them together. But this is what I don't like. When that whole incident occurred, when he allegedly headbutted her after being married for, what, 36 days? I didn't like the fact how she was going on all these shows. I just felt like she was marketing her misery, and I didn't like that. She cost that man his job and all the ridicule he received. And she's probably ghetto activity. She's probably the one got a PFA against him, but still sleeping with him. Cause I could see, I could really see her doing that. I see them doing that anyway. But, <sighs> moving right along. Speaking of Chad... Now, Chad had a pair in court this week for a probation review. Now, I told you a couple of shows ago how Chad skipped out on two months of mandatory anger management. And he had to go to court for it this week. So while in court, the judge decides that she wants to compliment Chad on picking a good attorney to represent him. 
So she compliments Chad. What did Chad do? He taps his attorney behind. She was outraged, felt disrespected, and threw him in jail for 30 days. Now, I side with both people, and I'm going to tell you why. Yes, he should know how to conduct himself in a proper manner and be professional in a courtroom. You don't do that. I understand. I get that. And she, I get where she's coming from. On the other hand, it's a courtroom. You complimented him, and that was his reaction. That's how men bond. That's how men talk. Yes, it's not the football field, and the courtroom is her field. But uh, I didn't like. I just felt like she was feeling her kahunas. I don't know if her bra was too tight or too loose that day, but I think she was feeling herself, and that's why she did that. Because that was just a compliment. That's just like women when you're in a hair salon and you get your hair done, your hair's done, and then somebody walks by, your hair looks nice. What do you do? You flip your hair. Thank you, and you look at you, slap five or whatever to your hairdresser. That's the same thing, you know. So. Chad and Evelyn both need to go on y'all. I understand to um, fix my life and get their life fixed. The two need to sit down since she want to do what she want to do. Anyway, but here's my question to you. Do you think she was wrong, the judge? Was Chad inappropriate? Was he? Mm -hmm. Was the judge on one? Mm -hmm. You let me know. Um, Facebook us, bradionow.com. Like us, interact. We want to know what's going on. Um, and there you have it. Until next time, I am your host, Brian Anthony. This is the B Radio Show. And I'll see you next go around.